Hi, this is Rob Ansbach, and welcome to eHeroes, the interview series for entrepreneurs. And today's eHero is Lisa Kennedy, who is a Sarasota real estate expert that doesn't like to be called a realtor. I don't know why. Hey, everybody. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm great. Never better. Yeah. You know, I think it's been about a year since I interviewed you for another uh, show. And, yeah, I, uh, I was trying to think of when that was. Yeah, I think it's been over a year. And uh, at the time, you had just come out with a book. Yeah. And uh, so let's, let's talk about how the book has given you a little bit more authority as a real tour. <laughs> as a real estate expert, I, I mean, it's certainly... Um, uh, given me more credibility. I mean, when, when my mentor told me, you know, I told her I wanted to write a book about my life. She's like, well, um, you know, people may be interested in parts of your life, but you definitely have to incor incorporate real estate because then you become the authority. Like how many real estate agents have actually written books? It's a really small percentage. So when I do go to a listing appointment, I leave a book behind. Um, and you know, a lot, a lot of influential people that I meet, I give a book to. So it, it really has given me credibility, influence. Um, you know, of course, looking back, since it's my first book, I'm sure you do the same. You're like, oh, I'm probably not going to go down that route again or things that you would do differently. But that's usually anytime you do some anything for the first time. Yeah, you know, that with, with any book, you know, I, I, I make mistakes and we try to uh, change them on the next book. But I take what I know works and keep doing it because I know that it's gonna you know, repeat the success. Um, and then we tweak some new things in, new elements that, that you know, we might wanna incorporate into the marketing of a book. Yeah. But with you, you know, I think you, you had struck on, a, on something that not a lot of realtors or real estate experts are writing books. So, how does your competition now view you as this person who, you know, has this book? Are, are, do they think that you're taking business away from them? No, I don't think that at all. Um, I think once they find out that I wrote a book, they're, it's surprising. Like, you wrote a book? Like, how do I get a copy? So, because it's so uncommon in my field, um, I don't think they see me as a threat though. I mean, there's enough, or at least they haven't <laughs> verbalized it to my face. There's enough for everybody. People buy homes all the time, sell homes all the time. And, um, you know, I just think that, you know, anyone can write a book as long as you have something to say, you know, and add value and have the right people that you're collaborating with. I mean, it's not rocket science. No, and, and, and that's what I tell yeah. them, but they think that they, you know, oh my goodness, a book, and they're thinking this, you know, 600 page novel and, you know, uh, something that may eventually become, you know, a, a movie, and it's not like that. It's, no, it's not. You're just sharing your knowledge, right? You're sharing your knowledge, you're sharing your experiences, your stories, and, and you're letting people know that you're human, that you make the same mistakes they do, and you know, you're, you're, you're putting this book out to help other people. Right, right. And, and quite frankly, when it launched last year, as you know, because you did the foreword, uh, what, the Kindle came out, uh, I think, around December of seven, um, 16. Mm -hmm. And then the, the um, hardcover or paper, paperback? Paperback. Yeah paperback um came out uh, january february and it, in the beginning there's always like all this buzz right and then it sort of died down a little my mistake i think is that i really didn't capitalize when it was at its height when it first launched so that's something that i would do different on the next one um but again you know we learn from our mistakes and it's not too late to, to do like a re-promotion of it. I just haven't really figured out that strategy or structure yet. Um, and it's just really hasn't been at the top of my list, quite frankly. <laughs> and I think that's, that's the, the problem with most authors is they, they come up with an idea, they wanna share their story, they get their book out, 
and it's that that first couple of weeks and they're, they're like wow this is great people are buying my book and then it dies down and they're like okay now i got to get back into my real life mode and, and make some money and they forget that they need to keep promoting that book you're so and, right and so you know and i think that with real estate most real estate people do the same thing. Not, not, ne not necessarily with a book, but with their marketing as well. Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, they have this house that they just got on the market and, and they're going to, they're going to push it for a couple weeks and then they're going to forget about it. And they're going to hope that it sells within that first couple weeks. Right. They don't have a plan after that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It, it's got to be full balls to the wall, the whole entire marketing plan because people there's there's so much inventory out there right now people will just move on to the next one and i think that's the reason why 80 percent of real estate agents fail mm -hmm. uh, they well i don't think they understand what it takes just you know being an agent altogether they don't understand that they have to cold call they have to lead generate they have to negotiate contracts and um the biggest thing is lead generation if you're not finding the leads you can be a great agent <laughs> if you don't have the deals it means nothing well let's talk about cold calling because you know for me i hate cold calling i hate picking up the phone to someone new and yeah. saying hey this is rob i can help you out and they're like what yeah so, you know you are dealing with this concept you know that that most people struggle with i agree with you and i think that's why a lot of people fail in any business because you you know starting a business you do have to um get people to buy into your idea you have to promote yourself you have to lead generate um cold calling you know typically you would, you have a script um let's take a for sale by owner you know that's what who i've been calling lately i mean but you can call expired listings you can call for sale by owner listings i just feel like for sale by owners are um, a little bit more motivated and the expired listings are more frustrated just because the house didn't sell for whatever reason. There's only a couple reasons why a house doesn't sell and it's either lack of the marketing plan that we talked about or it's priced too high. Really, those are the two big ones. But for sale by owners, uh, you know, they'll talk to you. And once you do a few, and start talking to them and asking the right questions, they'll tell you everything about their life. <laughs> you know, they'll tell you everything. And then, you know, the main question you want to ask is, you know, is the reason why you're selling it yourself because you don't want to pay the commission? And most of them are honest and say, yeah. And that tells me that either the, they don't see the value in real estate agents or they've, done it before or think they can do it but usually there's a breaking point where you know their motivation to leave is higher than their motivation to sell mm -hmm. so it's a timing thing you know and i think a lot of agents go after the wrong market i think they go after you know they they get into this business thinking wow you know i'm going to make a lot of money i'm going to be this this you know this agent that everybody comes to well, you know, in, in my market, there's, there's a thousand real estate agents. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's there's a lot of agents. Yeah. There's, I think there's 5,000 um, in Sarasota and Manatee County. And I think about 4,000 of them are active, you know, because you have agents. I have an agent that actually lives on my street that got his real estate license because it's only about 62 hours um, to sell his own house to save 15,000. So to spend a few hundred bucks to save 10,000 to sell it yourself, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it made sense to him. So there, there's a lot of folks out there, or there's a lot of folks out there that got their license, didn't put the work in, so now they have a real job, but they're still you know, friends and family type thing, which I think is, I don't know the percentage on that, but I'm gonna say it's, at least 30. Yeah. You know, there's a motivation to what I guess everybody does. Yeah. Whether they want to sell a home, whether they want to write a book. Well, 
our jobs as entrepreneurs is to figure out what that motivation is and provide them a solution that they can live with that they can say, well, you know what? Yeah, it's better to pay the real estate person my commission or that whatever the commission is instead of me trying to sell it myself or that book publisher to write the book or do the book or market the book. Because I mean, really, honestly, what is your time worth? If you exactly. want to try to sell it yourself, I mean, that's, that takes time. And not just the, the, the time that it takes to sell it, but fielding all those calls, mostly from agents mm -hmm. that are wanting to list it. I called one last week and someone else answered the phone other than the owner. And she said she was just there to field the calls. I think it was like a $2 million house. So the, the guy doesn't want to pay commission, but he's paying someone to field the calls. <laughs> So I thought that was kind of comical. That was the first time I had ran into that. You know, let's talk about the rules and regulations of trying to sell it yourself. yourself. Okay. You know, as a, as a real estate professional, you know, you've gone to these classes, you understand, you know, what the rules are, what the regulations are, what can be said or shouldn't be said. Well, a for sale by owner doesn't know any of that stuff. No, and it can be a slippery slope, Rob, because, you know, you can't talk about demographics, can't talk about religion, or talk about, you know, if you know they're Jewish, that there's a synagogue right down the road. I mean, all that you're not supposed to talk about. It's, it's the law. And never mind just the contract itself, the far bar contract. Yeah, we're on, we're on the far bar five right now. And just understanding that the addendums. Um, now, some of them will try to do it themselves and figure it out. And the other agent, um, if, if there is another agent bringing the, the buyer, um, probably ends up doing a lot of the work. But at the same time, I mean, they can always hire a real estate attorney, which would be the smart thing to do. It's, it's still going to be less than 3%. But again, they're, they're doing all this work themselves and fielding all those calls and yeah. And not to mention showing the house when someone is actually interested in it. And, and here's an interest, here's, here's a funny thing too. When you talk to for sale by owners, they'll I'll always ask them, well, how many showings did you have this week? And they'll say five. And then I'll say how many of them were real estate agents? And they'll say four. <laughs> and then I'll say, okay, well, what about the other person? Were they interested? Oh, they're, they're interested and they really like the home. Well, here's the thing. No one is going to say, you know what? I don't like this house because it's an insult, right? They're not going to say that. Of course, they're going to say, oh, you have a lovely home. And that's the end of it. So, so there's a lot of dynamics that go into it, but going back to what you said, and I wanted to make a point in this, the motivation for the seller is what's important to them. So if a buyer comes in, they're not going to be aware of the buyer's motivation. They're not going to try to dig into that and they're going to just throw up all over people that come in by saying, we've done this and we've done that, you know, buyer doesn't care. The buyer just cares about, you know, what's it, is it going to meet their needs? Who cares if you did a kitchen remodel two years ago and put granite in? Maybe the buyer doesn't even care about that or want granite for that matter. You know, and I find, you know, every time I see somebody that has a for sale by owner sign, I, I, I think to myself, okay, what are they hiding? You know, what are they not disclosing? You know, and in most real estate transactions, you're supposed to put down, you know, everything that, that you're aware of what happened to the home. So if it got flooded, you're supposed to disclose that. If a, you know, if, if a wall caved in, you're supposed to disclose that. Some people don't disclose. And then you have, you know, the, the, the real estate person who's, you know, trying to help saying, you know, you got to disclose, you got to put all this down. And, um, you know, so there's a slippery slope there when you're trying to sell it yourself because now you you don't have the knowledge you're supposed to. Right. And you could get sued. Yeah. You really could. And and I don't I don't think they see it that way. I just think they see it like, you know, most people are proud of their homes. They're and, and they're 
and they're selling it for a reason, whether it's to, I mean, the majority of them are, at least in my market, are downsizing. Their kids are all grown, you know, and they just don't need a big house anymore. That's, that's probably a large percentage. Um, but again, it's the timing. It, and it could take, you know, I got, I got one. I'm still calling. It's been 10 months calling month after month after month. And still the pain of him not leaving is not, uh, it's just not there. So it, do, it doesn't become a sale for, for me or a win for me until that pain is really bad. And for him, he's just so stuck on the fact that he's got 850 in the house and he's not gonna take a penny less than 850. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to cut your losses, but that's right. Yeah. So describe your your uh, your typical, you know, clientele. I mean, what what types of homes are they after? Uh, I want to say the majority of uh, my buyers are uh, moving to Florida. It's something that they've dreamed of their whole life. Um, anywhere from ages forty five to sixty five. Um, some, some are families, some have children that are grown. Now, um, I, I'm going to say the majority of them, this is going to be their final home. This, this, they've either saved for this the, their whole entire life, or it's going to be their, okay, let's visit Florida, you know, as snowbirds once a year, and then it'll be our forever home. So, so that's mostly who I deal with other than friends and family that's really the clientele what, that I receive either through referrals or lead generation um, or those for sale by owners um, either moving on. I actually had one that was moving back to where they were from because their kids had all moved back to where they were from. So a lot of times you'll find, find them either following their children because of their grandchildren, things like that. So what's the average uh, sale of a home down in, in, in your area? Um, well, since I can't, you know, as you know, I came from custom home builder. Um, I, I got my real estate license five years ago. I practiced general real estate for about six months and then had an amazing opportunity with a custom home builder, luxury custom home. So when I was, um, doing that, my average sale was a million. And now that I've come back out on my own, that's dropped a little bit, but only because, you know, I can do listings now. I, I'm calling all different types of demographics. So I would say right now my average is four to 500,000 per. But you know, I, I just had a client that bought a lot for 400,000 and the house they wanna build in two years is a $1.5 million house. So I get that a lot too, because that's kind of my experience and in, in the past um, are new builds. And I'm a huge fan of new construction. So you get people that, that come into Florida and they buy a home and then they want to upgrade, you know, in, in a year or two because it's not the size home that they want or they just, they want something that's more in line with their dream. Um, both. It's either, uh, you know, it's either they have come here and realized I had one, a couple months ago, came here, realized uh, that it wasn't the community that they wanted to be in. Maybe they didn't explore enough before they bought the first home. So that can be a, um, that happens sometimes. P people, it's funny because a lot, a lot of people that I first meet, um, I just had a referral. I had just met him. He's coming from Chicago. They'll say, we're, we're going to explore everywhere. We're going to explore Tampa, Clearwater, Naples, Sarasota, so all of the coast. And it's not my job to be their tour guide, right? You know, I let them do that on their own, but at the same time trying to, you know, provide value to them and convince them that I'm the agent that they should go with. And they'll probably end up in Sarasota anyway. 90% of them that are exploring do end up in Sarasota. I'm a, huge fan obviously and it just has so much to offer um but again it depends on lifestyle too so here's your book anybody can ah. see it it's called selling the million dollar model yay unlock the secrets to selling million dollar real estate how do they find this book 
and how do they contact you? Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, so I'm pretty much Lisa Marie Kennedy on all platforms of social media, other than Instagram, it's Lisa underscore Marie underscore Kennedy. Um, they can also go straight to the website, sellingthemilliondollarmodel.com. And um, my website, lisamariekennedy.com. Complicated. <laughs> I know. I tried to make it super easy. <laughs> but they can go to Amazon and get it on uh, paperback and Kindle. Yeah. Yep. They can get it in both. Uh, I believe the Kindle version is still 99 cents. Wow. That's I know. I mean, that's cheaper than a Starbucks coffee. I know. <laughs> I guess cheaper than a McDonald's coffee. <laughs> but by the time this airs, maybe, maybe I'll raise the price. <gasps> Not for your viewers, though. Just for yeah, everybody else. Yeah, we'll, we'll give them a special price. Yeah, of course. So, if I was coming down to Florida, to Sarasota, what is the process that you would take me you know on to look for properties yeah so the first thing i would say you know what let's go to the office um ask a whole lot of questions about what you're looking for um it's called the buyer's consultation uh and, and we do that so we're not looking at 20 homes and wasting your time wasting my time but we also do that to provide value um because what happens sometimes in this industry is that we have a buyer's consultation or maybe we haven't quite made it to that step yet. Your buyers go out to new construction, you're not registered, they buy with that new home consultant and you're out of the deal. So that buyer's consultation is just for that reason alone, so important uh, because we're gonna narrow down to square footage, um, what kind of view you want, what kind of exposure you want, what kind of lifestyle you're living. And that's going to give me a great idea of maybe six to 10 homes at the very most. And then I'm going to pull them up and then I'm going to eliminate a few more. So we're going to look at five max that day and uh, in a perfect world, they would pick one of the five. But I think buyers sometimes have in their head that they need to look at a lot of homes and that's just not the case. If you ask the right questions, they're going to find the perfect home and they're gonna know when they walk in. What are a few of the things that people are actually are looking for? I mean, is it, is it a pool, is it? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, here uh, in Florida, uh, the man always wants an oversized three-car garage. Uh, flex spaces are really big right now, so whether that be an extra bedroom for like a craft room for her or a den for him, or a gym or something like that. Um, a lot of people want that extra space. Um, bonus rooms, people like that. But also they like more of the, what we call a casita, which is um, either a mother-in-law, traditionally called a mother-in-law suite. Uh, um, it's got a bathroom attached with its own entrance. Um, and that can be for company, it can be for mother-in-law, father-in-law, whoever, but a separate, sort of like a separate living quarters. That's really big now too. And, and I would say 90% of people that, that I work with want water. And um, I've, I live on a preserve. I have for 10 years in the same house and it's so beautiful. And uh, people just fixated on water though. I, and especially people coming from the North. They, they want that water view. So it's a pond or, or a stream or a the ocean or yeah, yeah. or it's Sarasota Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we, and we also do have the Manatee river too. So that's where my boaters go. Um, cause that you, you can be on the Manatee river and be out in Tampa Bay in 20 minutes. It's beautiful. There you go. Yeah. So if you want a home that's near Tampa, but yeah. probably a little cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, the Tampa market is very saturated right now, but it's also a little bit more expensive, depending on what you're looking for. So to all my listeners, or just that one that needs a home, <laughs> go to lisamariekennedy.com, right? Thank you, Rob. And download the book, or buy the book, or request a copy of the book. And uh, I think you'll, you'll, 
appreciate the mindset that most realtors, I think, have when it comes to selling, but are afraid to actually put it in a book. And, and Lisa does a good job with that. Thank you, Rob. So, you know. I appreciate you having me today. You know, for, for everyone that's out there, you're going to learn. I think you're going to learn a lot from Lisa. Just follow her on social. Follow her on her website. And, you know, if you're thinking about getting into real estate, I think you're going to learn a little bit more than maybe you wanted. <laughs> Especially cold calling, because it's not something that most people like to do anymore. Right. You know, in fact, I have, I have these devices. I like them. But I rarely ever answer the phone anymore. I just I hate it because it just takes up so much of my time. Right. And uh, but I think it's still a very valuable thing to do when you connect with people to let them know, you know, that you're thinking about them. One, right. That they can trust you, mm -hmm. and you have the knowledge behind you to help them with their solution. That's right. Providing solutions. So, thanks everyone, and I want you to, if you have. Uh, someone that you think is an e-hero, let me know, and I will get them on the show. But round of applause for, for Lisa Marie Kennedy for being our e-hero today. Thank you, Rob. I'm grateful for you. And I'll catch you on future episodes. Adios. Bye.